everybody to Daytonic Takes. I'm actually here with a really special guest. Uh, we have Jack Skane. Hey, well, how's it going, Jack? Welcome. Good. Thank you for having me. Yeah, of course. Uh, I'm, it's an honor to have you on the show, and thank you for taking the time out of your day to, to join us for an episode where the fans really ask all the questions. Uh, so the first question is, how do you pronounce your last name? We kind of, I kind of just said it, but how do you pronounce it? Yeah, so it's Skane. Uh, like you said, which is kind of confusing because it's not at all what it looks like. But yeah, that's it's skeined. Yeah, no worries, no worries. And you probably had that problem your whole life, right? Growing up in my entire actually, life. Yeah, in North Carolina. I mean, you probably have gotten that skehan the whole time, right? Uh huh. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Um, has there any? Has there been any broadcasters that's gotten your name wrong? Yeah, the one that um the guy at school got it wrong pretty oh, much the whole time for the Tar Heels I was there. Huh? For the Tar Heels? Yeah. No. Oh. Got it wrong for about 4 years there, so that's all right. Oh. I'm used to it. <laughs> okay, okay. So, kind of just to go into your childhood and kind of start there. Growing up, who was your favorite soccer player growing up or did you have a favorite sport that you liked besides soccer? Yeah, so I grew up in Memphis, Tennessee, and uh, it's not exactly soccer city. I played everything growing up. Yeah. Um, until like eighth or ninth grade is when I really just started just doing soccer. I played basketball, too, up until then. And then I realized I wasn't going to be very tall. So <laughs> uh, I had that realization that I think a lot of people have. But um, yeah, so I grew up watching like every sport, huge football, basketball fan and soccer fan. Uh, I just loved watching Messi and Ronaldo, which is a, a basic answer, but that's just the truth. Okay, that's awesome. That's awesome. Um, did you have a favorite basketball player growing up? Um, so I was always a LeBron fan, mm. and uh, but I was a Memphis Grizzlies fan. Oh, okay. So Ooh. since the Grizzlies were never great, mm. except for like a little run there, it was, I just like to follow LeBron. Right. Um, but there were some great Grizzlies like Tony Allen and Zach Randolph and uh, some of the guys now. So, yeah. right. Right. Yeah. I was about, I was just about to say Tony Allen's like one of those defensive greats before we knew about Patrick Beverly and things like yeah. that. Right. So Tony Allen was awesome. Yeah. He paved the way for those uh -huh. defensive role players like Marcus uh -huh. smart and things like that. Yeah. So definitely awesome that you shout him out. That's good. Give some yeah. love, you know, <laughs> for sure. But, all right. So do you have any favorite memories playing soccer? Um, yeah, like growing up, playing in tournaments with friends and, you know, who are some of my best friends now still. And, um, but my junior year of college at UNC, we played at Duke and beat them 1-0 and I scored. And so uh -huh. that was pretty good. Yeah. Anytime you can beat Duke is pretty good. <laughs> so that's a because this podcast is usually for Bay Area fans. Explain yeah. a little bit more. Uh, about that kind of that rivalry because that's an east coast college rivalry right duke and and uh, northern carolina so or north carolina uh how does that feel on a day-to-day -day basis when you go to unc a day-to-day -day, you don't notice it it's just uh, like athletics you know it's uh yeah. you want to beat them and they want to beat you in, in every sport and both schools are really good at a lot of sports so that's where it comes into play is, mm -hmm. is oftentimes you know the top two teams in an acc and whatever sport it is um, was just makes it more intense. And it's like, you know, 12 miles down the road. Oh, wow. So, so it's, yeah, really it's close. super close. And that that adds to it for sure. Yeah. And I guess you guys always have that. Oh, yeah, we had Michael Jordan, but Duke's like, oh, we're sure. always good. Right. So it's yeah, like, for sure. oh, dang, you for know, sure. it's, it's definitely a debate to have always. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. And on the on the soccer side, do you remember your record versus them? Or was it just that we lost to them once when I was hmm. there? Uh, my senior year other than that we beat them so it was it was pretty good I don't know exactly what that was maybe mm. like four and one mm. something like that that's pretty good yeah mm -hmm. I'll take it did you know uh, if you played against any professionals during your time in college or is there anybody that you played up against that you see now in MLS that you kind of run the same circles with a lot uh, oh yeah there are a lot of guys in the MLS that I played against in the ACC Oh, wow. Um, I could go like pretty much school by school. Oh, wow. So it's, yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, a lot of guys. So yeah. like anybody like in particular, just like one time. Like, I mean, Syracuse had Miles Robinson. Oh, OK. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. A lot of these 
yeah, especially you included, a lot of guys are coming out of college nowadays and it, and it becomes a great pathway to, to reach the professional level in MLS guys like Tanner Beeson from Stanford and Jordan Morris, uh, local guys coming out of, you know, the local colleges, but yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it's, it's a great pipeline for, for a player like you, would you recommend it to players, you know, playing soccer right now, looking for kind of like that next step? A thousand percent. Yeah. yeah. Because it's just a great experience. Like not just, I mean, soccer is great, but going to school is great. You grow up and then you've got the option to play or to move on to something else. So it's, it, it opens the door to a lot of opportunities. Yeah. And did you end up finishing your degree? I did. Oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. Especially because, you know, your playing career is going to be long and it's going to be a great time, but you always have to think about that next step, right? Sure. And college is always that good kind of like safety net to go ahead uh-huh. and let good you balance. Uh, yeah, exactly. I, I know there's a couple of quakes that um, played prior that after kind of playing, they, they can go into a full-time job because they uh-huh. went to college before. Um, exactly. so that's always a good thing to fall back on. I have some rapid fire questions to kind of get to, to know you or let the fans get to know you. Um, are you ready? Yep. Favorite soccer team? Uh, the Quakes. Favorite kit? Favorite kit? Yeah, like a soccer kit. Yeah, I like the uh, I like the blue ones. Mm. Favorite food? <sighs> Barbecue pizza. Okay. Favorite color? Blue, Carolina blue, light blue. A perfect day for you is? Um, probably playing golf. Okay. Favorite music? country no shame in that all right you know luke Combs, baby that, that, that's all me right there oh, oh yeah no best, shame. best dj on the team tommy thompson okay if you didn't play your position what position would you play probably on the wing if you got in a fight what teammate would you bring um it's a good question <laughs> Um, maybe Nathan. Okay. Okay. Perfect. I feel like he could, he could rip somebody up. If we to. <laughs> exactly. What former teammate of yours would you like to see play for the San Jose earthquakes? Uh, a good college buddy of mine plays at the Rapids. Named What's Jeremy the- Kelly. Okay. Perfect. 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 What position does he play? He's a outside back. Okay. He was my like roommate for four years at school. Oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. Just, just call up uh leech and be like, Hey man, I know, I know you're busy lately, you know, on the phones doing big things, but uh, get my boy here. Let's go. <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> like, Hey, I know you got some gab left over dog. What's good. <laughs> I know. And right. leech is a UNC guy too. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Um, so thanks for the rapid questions. That was, that went pretty well. Um, best dj on the team so a lot of people say jackson yule but you say tommy thompson what's up with uh, that could be him too okay it could be him too yeah Those how do two. you because you like country music how do you mix it with the reggaeton or the cumbia that happens with the latin guys that's, that's a hard mix to do that's a hard fix yeah and, right yeah i've started to enjoy it uh-huh. to be honest i enjoy it but uh it's still probably never going to be something i'll turn on if right. i'm in the car just me but yeah that's okay um what guys are coming around to the country music? There are actually a decent amount that like already listened to it um, more than I expected. Yeah. It's more popular out here than I expected. Yeah. Um, yeah. Country music has been changing a lot. Right. So you, you're yeah. starting to get your Dan and Shays instead of your George Straits. And it's kind of mm-hmm. mainstreaming the country music. So like Luke Combs too. Yeah. So, yeah. There's a lot of, a lot of guys to be honest to listen to it. Yeah. Well, Every time when short before COVID, right? Shoreline used to be popping for country country music, right? So I mean, I I I like country music, but a lot of people don't like country music. And they would still go out to these events because it was something to be at. And then it was always good listening music. So you're not gonna be complaining, right? Yeah. I've heard that. I've I've heard that uh I need to go out there. Well, yeah, you haven't been out to Shoreline yet. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay, perfect. Yeah. So definitely when COVID is all said and done, right? You you definitely gotta go out there. Um, it's mm-hmm. a great time. It's great amphitheater. It has great acoustics, but don't go in a lot unless you like a shit show, right? So, <laughs> no, but uh, definitely get a seat and enjoy the enjoy the show. That's good to know. 
yeah, yeah. You, you get some drunk people fall it because it's on an angle. So it's like, oh, yeah. no, no, no. Um, all right. Perfect. Thank you for that. Um, what made you choose being a Tar Heel? Um, I grew up a fan because my grandfather played um, basketball and baseball there. Mm. And so I grew up a fan. And then when I had the option to go, it was just pretty, pretty easy answer. Yeah, like a dream come true, right? Mm -hmm, for sure. Was there any doubt in your mind maybe that this school would give you a bigger scholarship or anything? No, no. to be honest, just because it was – once I had the chance to go, I was just like, this is yeah. where I want to go. That makes sense. Um, so I was lucky in the fact that I didn't have to sit there and think about it too much. Yeah, no, that, that definitely – yeah, that's that's awesome. Uh, getting to your dream school is like honestly a dream come true yeah, for anybody, sure. right? So definitely. Um, I saw that you played in San Francisco FC before the Quakes. Were you familiar with the area before getting drafted by the Quakes? A little bit. Oh. Um, myself and a couple of my college teammates came out for that summer league and played. Uh, we lived in Palo Alto for about a month with a teammate. Um and so it became a little bit familiar, but it's not the same as, you know, just up and moving out here. But it was nice to have a little bit of knowledge for sure before I got out here. Yeah, I mean, a month is a good amount of time to feel like you have some sort of affiliation to that mm -hmm. place. Definitely. I, yeah. When COVID first started, I, I had a month in Reno and I was like, oh, man, I always have this this love for Reno, even though I spent only a month there. So yeah. definitely I understand sure. what you're talking about when you say, yeah. yeah, you had some sort of affiliation for a month. Um, but how did you like it? I mean, how was it, how was playing for San Francisco FC? Uh, what, what did you think of the area when you first got here? I loved it. Mm -hmm. Um, we had a ton of fun out here that summer. Um, <laughs> we had a good time playing with the, with the team and a good time just like enjoying California, to be honest, we were sophomores in college. And so we were just having a good time and it was a lot of fun. Did you, uh, go ahead and because you were in Palo Alto, right? Did you be like, hey, like, where are the college parties? Did you run into Tanner at all or anything like that? I, it's actually, it's funny because Tanner was on the team. Yeah, yeah, right, right. Oh, yeah. on the summer league team. On the summer, on well, San Francisco City. Oh, wow, yeah. that's funny. Okay. So we got to know Tanner a little bit. So, yeah, it was good. And, yeah, when 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 you got drafted, he was probably like, hey, man, I already know you. What's yeah, we texted each other that day. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. Um, so was it hard playing in – for your college team at the same time as the FC team or Bay Area base or sorry, San Francisco FC, or was it just kind of like a, I'm just going to play all year round type of deal? Well, when your your coaches, our coach encouraged us to play in the summer. Mm. Um, so it was kind of just pick a team in this league for a bit and go play because you can't play as a team with the coaches per NCAA rules. Ah, uh, got um, it. Got it. So we wouldn't have been able to train as a team anyway. So it was it was a good experience, something to do for sure. And do you kind of get together with your teammates and be like, hey, like, let's all join this one together so we can all mm -hmm. kind of get some reps in together? Yeah, exactly. Got it. Got it. W what was it down to San Francisco FC and probably other other teams? Right. Was there some other team that you guys thought of? Honestly, there were, there were a few teams in North Carolina that we thought just mm. because it'd be easy um, yeah. to stay close. But we just wanted to go to California, to be honest. So What's uh, we just packed the bags and came out. Yeah. What's the perception of California out there? Like being from Memphis and in Northern Carolina, right? Like what, uh, what do you guys think of it? I mean, California is awesome. Everyone thinks right. California is awesome. There's just so much out here that like just doesn't exist on the East Coast or in the South. Like what? Like what? I mean, you can go to – you can do pretty much anything within an hour's drive. That's true. Right. You That's can go true. to the mountains, you can go to the beach, you can go to the cliffs over the beach, which I'd never right. seen before. You oh, can wow. go to uh like a desert essentially. It's just a lot of cool yeah. things out here. And the weather's insane. So everyone knows that. Yeah. And you can go out so, to like Modesto or Sonora and then you'll be you'll really be in country, country uh, living, right? Like exactly. that's that that would probably yeah, remind you of home. Yeah. Um <laughs> Yeah, and then you have four hours away from Tahoe. So that's that's always something beautiful to look at in four hours, sure. right? Out here in Japan, not a lot of people know about California. I was kind of shocked. I was like, really? you guys don't know about the gem in the United States? Like, and then I show up Lake Tahoe and they're like, oh my God. You know, they yeah, that's they, surprising. Yeah, I thought it was gonna be a lot more famous, to be honest. Um uh -huh. Hawaii, though, Hawaii is number one out oh, here. 
Really? Everybody knows Hawaii. They think it's its own country. Like <laughs> everybody mm-hmm. loves Hawaii. So I've always like, oh, where do you where do you want to live? And they're always like, because I teach a whole bunch of kids and they always say, oh, I want to live in Hawaii. So I'm like, America. And they're like, no, 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 no. Hawaii. <laughs> I'm like, oh. Hawaii. Yeah. So uh, no love for California out here. So it's nice to hear that at least in the East Coast and in the South, they, they do like California. Yeah. All right. Um, next question we have. How did you feel on draft night before getting chosen? Um, good. To be honest, it's, it's yeah. weird because you just have no idea where you're moving. Mm. Um, so it's a weird feeling. You have no control. And then when it ended up being the Quakes, I was, you know, excited to come back to California. Right. Cause so you were here already. Excited. So, mm-hmm. so that, that must've been a good feeling. Um, For sure. did you want to go to any specific team? I mean, did you have a buddy on a certain team that left the year before? Or? There were, I mean, there were people I knew on different teams. Sure. But to be honest, I was just pumped to go anywhere. Yeah. Right. Um, for the chance to play. And so when it ended up being California, it was great. Yeah. How, how did you feel? How was the locker room or how were your friends from your college team or your coach? What did, did they text you? Did they call you? Yeah. All, all of the above. Uh, just excited. There were a few of us who went in that draft. And so wow. people were just excited for us and it was, uh, it was, it was cool. Yeah. It must've been a great feeling, especially if you could share it with all, with all your friends too. That's definitely that's something yeah, good to have. Um, did the quakes contact you before the draft? They did. Okay. Um, and what'd they say? Like, Oh, we're interested in you or essentially. Yeah. Just wanted to have a conversation interested in, um, you know, not that we're going to take you, but maybe. Mm. So yeah. Did they have you fill out like a questionnaire, like NFL draft type of deal where no, if, if your mom is like in that. this situation, what would you do? <laughs> nothing like that. No, it, it was low key. It was nice. Okay. To not have to worry too much about it. Was it Jesse himself? It was Chris Leach. Oh, Chris. Wow. Okay. Perfect. So, so definitely a nice affiliation mm-hmm. back then too. So yeah. um, this question kind of was a little set up before, but I guess you can answer in any way you want. How did the Jesse firing affect you? Thinking that he brought you in, but it might've been Chris Leach. Um, some of the guys I talked to, it affected them a little bit because they did bring him into this team. Um, how did it, un- he drafted you so how, how did you how did you feel um i felt bad for him because yeah. i think jesse's a really great guy yeah um but at the same time it wasn't like um i don't think i had solidified myself in the league to the point where a, a relationship with any gm would be um essential to right. anything in my career yet um and so I really like Jesse as a person. I think he liked me as a person. We had a good relationship, but I don't think that it's going to have a, a long-term effect on my career personally. Mm. It was just more of a, a, a personal relationship that was, um, that was tough to see and leave. Right. Yeah. Especially because, you know, and you understand it's a business, right? You're a professional sure. and it, it's going to happen, right? You're going to see mm-hmm. bodies come and go, but you just got to enjoy the time that you have. Right. So, all right this is kind of going into your playing time with the quakes. Now, um, how is playing for Matias Almeida? Did you know about him before getting to the quakes? I had known, um, a bit about him just cause it was such a big deal when he came to the quakes and, right. um, yeah, I really enjoy it. I think he's a great guy. Um, he's intense and he, he supports people and he encourages people. And I think he's a really good coach. How's your Spanish Jack? Uh, doesn't exist. No, no, no nada. <laughs> Nothing. Nada. Nothing. So what? What if you come home to Memphis and bust out some Spanish, dude? What would they they'd be, do? They'd be impressed. They'd be shocked. Is the truth. And <laughs> I couldn't have understood any of it before I got here. And then okay, I can understand a decent amount of Spanish now. I mean, okay, compared to nothing, which is where I was. Right. Um, I just can't speak it. Like I just don't know how of long course. that's going to take me. It's tough. I, are you on Duolingo? I am, but it's, yeah, I get bored on that app. Yeah, right. The, the owl gets mad at you, bro, that you don't show yeah, up for yeah. days, you know? Yeah. <laughs> um, but I guess in Memphis, people don't walk around talking Spanish like they do in San Jose, right? So it's definitely a different culture to think that 
what if a Matias Almeida went to like Nashville, you know, like to coach. So it's, it's definitely something to think about. <laughs> is it? Yeah, that'd be super, that'd be super different. <laughs> right, sure. right. Is it, is it a little tough to understand what he's saying or does, does, does Augustine, like I saw a video recently where the, uh, the all-star kind of cap went to uh, Kate Cow, but Augustine was translating almost in real time. So it seems like he's gotten better over the time kind of translating what Matias wants to say. Is that the case? Yeah, he's super, it's super impressive. Yeah. The way that Augustine can do it, to be honest. Uh, it is real time. Yeah, yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. And so, like, not understanding Spanish isn't too big of a deal. Mm. Because Are, uh, is the locker room kind of understanding Spanish, or is Matias learning English faster? Both. It's going both ways. Yeah. Yeah, which is nice. Can Guys you... can kind of speak a little bit to each other in both. Okay. Yeah. I was going to say that. Uh, can Matias speak to you in English a little bit? Oh, I mean, he, a little bit, mm. but it'd be like me trying to speak Spanish. It's not <laughs> like, there's not much, there's not much, but like there's a little bit. Is there any words that you're picking up in particular? No, honestly, just the basic things. Basics. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like uh, a la izquierda to the left. Right. So, yeah. Or to the like right. A la derecha. Exactly. Like things yeah. you would hear while playing. Yeah. Right. Right. Like, Pasa la pelota, pass the ball, right? Yeah. <laughs> cool, cool. All right. What is your favorite Quakes moment? Last year at the Disney tournament, when, when Shea scored that goal against Vancouver, it was pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, that yeah, must have yeah. felt like the whole world was watching, right? Because they were. So. Yeah, that was that was pretty awesome. Uh, were you, Did you have one of the spray cans, or where were you in that? Oh, okay. Where you that? I, I was on the bench and sprinted over there. It was cool. Yeah, it was a lot oh. of fun. How was that tournament? Like, uh, did you like being? It was basically like being on vacation with the guys, right? So how did how did you feel during that? Yeah, it was like a training camp. It was fun. I had a good time. It was a long time, and it was really hot, mm. but it was it was good to to be with the guys for a long time and train, and especially my first year to have the opportunity to train with these guys every day it was good i had a good time yeah and and like kind of taking a step back just as a person is that an experience that you will always like kind of remember because it's something that's so odd that would never happen like hey i got to do a one month kind of or two month training camp at disney world right like what like what exactly it's something like you can't forget no there's no way anyone who was there can ever forget it yeah because it was just so unique Mm. Did you uh, see any crocodiles or did you kick any balls at any crocodiles? Like, I didn't see any. Oh, okay. All the time, to be honest. I thought I would. Yeah. <laughs> Just like wake up one day, Carlos Vieira, like trying to get his RC car out of the crocodile yeah. or something. Like, <laughs> like, what's going on here? <laughs> um, what's personally your favorite moment in your life? Hmm. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. No worries. Um, that's tough. I, I'm yeah. not sure. Or one of your favorite moments. Let's do that. Um, honestly, the, the chance to go to school at UNC was a great moment. Mm. Um, being drafted here was a great moment. Yeah. Um, but those are soccer-focused things. And if we're right. staying soccer-focused, those are probably the, the two coolest and most important things that have happened so far. Uh, personally, what do you like to do on your free time? Like, uh, what's something that you, you consider your hobby? I like to play golf. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, and so, uh, when I can, I do. Uh, have you been to crystal crystal Springs yet? I haven't. Oh, what? Where do you usually golf then? Just around here in San Jose, the San Jose Muni, uh, uh Prune Ridge, places like that. Guys, if you're listening and you play golf, uh, take a look at, uh, you maybe see Jack, you know, <laughs> say what's up. <laughs> definitely maybe one day you know gareth bell and jack are just gonna be on the back nine you know <laughs> that'd be pretty cool yeah is that is that someone you would like to golf with in your in your future definitely yeah that would be sweet is like the, is that the michael jordan of soccer slash golf like <laughs> essentially he's yeah. the michael jordan of golfers who play soccer yeah right right or or steph curry kind of like the one yeah. that's exactly. like the mecca yeah. uh, <laughs> of athletes that play golf exactly charles barkley maybe <laughs> uh what's your i guess what's your what's your lowest score that you've ever kind of hit 
or golf? Um, probably like low, probably like 80. Mm. I'm not great, but mm. I just enjoy playing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, probably like an 80. Beers or no beers? <laughs> yeah, it depends. Depends how much free time we have. Yeah, right, right, right. Definitely, definitely. That's 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 the first thing I ask when people ask me if I want to go golfing. Beers or no beers? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Those uh, are different rounds. Right, right, right. Uh, a whole bunch of mulligans, you know. <laughs> uh, do you ever play soccer golf or with like? I've never played. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. I, mm. um, I it would make one... sense if I did, probably, but I haven't. I think there's one in San Jose. I'm not sure. But... I think so too. Yeah. Um, it would be yeah, it'd be something to go do definitely. Um mm-hmm. which jersey do you like the most? I guess you kind of answer this one. You like the blue one, right? I like the blue one. Yeah. Um yeah, I think it what, looks good. Yeah, what do you what do you like about it? Like what part? Um, I like the color and I just think it's simple. Uh, yeah, yeah. The which I like. Mm, the replica one didn't kind of look too good when the leak there was a leak that came out. You you probably saw it from the start, but mm-hmm. once that white strip came out on the top of the of kind of like the neckline, yeah. that made it look a lot better because uh-huh. the, the replica doesn't have that. The authentic one does, and it's like, oh, that's a big difference. So, oh really? Looks, yeah, it looks kind of complete when it's the whole kit together. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So I, I already asked you this. How did you like playing in the Orlando bubble? Or we kind of got to it already. Um. Did you room with anybody or did you kind of have a special connection with anybody that you were there or kind of hung out with them the most? Um, we didn't have roommates at the time because of COVID. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Um, but to be honest, we all get along pretty well. Yeah. All the guys on the team. But um, like the group of me, Tanner, Jackson, JT, and, and Paul are all kind of young guys who went to college. So we get along really well. Mm. Yeah, I would assume so, right? Like. Mm-hmm just all the younger guys, like, especially if you went to college, it's kind of like a, a niche, a little bit of a niche thing in mm-hmm. MLS and that's similar sh- experiences. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's a shared experience. So something, something I always talk about, like give Tanner a whole bunch of crap because he goes to, he went to Stanford or something, you know, like, <laughs> Hey bro, you a genius or something. <laughs> um, so this is a longer question here. Uh, there's been a lot of a uh, young attacker midfields coming through the quake set up lately, including Kate Cows, Yad Haji, Eric Cavill, Kevin Partida, and Gilbert Fuentes. Even though some of you have since left the quakes on a permanent basis, is there some kind of connection going through that shared experience with these guys that you have? Yeah, definitely. Cause we practice together every day. Yeah. Um, so yeah, there is a shared experience of that, of, trying to you know make it and trying to right work together in the in a similar position do you keep in contact with guys like uh eric Calvillo and, and gilbert frontes because they are on loan currently do you kind of like yeah. hit them up sometimes I'll, I'll text them sometimes yeah and just see how they're doing yeah um and i know that they're having a good time and enjoying yeah. it and playing so that's good we had eric on the podcast before and i know he's from um uh, from uh, Paul, uh, Palm or Palmdale, Palmdale, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, it's nice that he went kind of back home, right, to go play a little bit, and he gets to be with his family all the time. And exactly, it was yeah. a good setup for him. And then Gilbert, on the other hand, he's loving Austin, dude. I see him at, posting at bars, you know, like, hey, what's up, dude? Like, he's got to be having fun in Austin, right? No Who, who's not having fun? Yeah. Like Nick Lima, right? He must be having fun. Mm-hmm. Do you keep Do you keep in touch with kind of like the former Quakes at all, or like Nick, for example? I'll text Nick sometimes. Yeah, yeah. we talk sometimes. Um, he was similar in that he went to college and then to the yeah. Quakes. So we have a good relationship too in terms of shared experiences. And I know he's having a good time down there too. Yeah, right. Yeah, definitely. I saw, I think he had a Mohawk recently. So I was like, oh, man, yeah, he's having a blast. That. that was interesting. Yeah, right. All right. Um, who would you, yeah, who would you consider kind of like your best friend in the locker room or who do you kind of like? you know, clown on the most or like, Hey, Jacob, dude, your shorts are backwards or something. Right. What's going uh, Like who, who do you consider the closest to in the locker room? Probably, um, Tanner, JT and Jackson. Yeah. 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 The, the, the country music boys, right? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So, but I heard Jackson definitely, definitely kind of mixes the music around because he's, he has to, cause he's the captain, right? He's got to get the Latin flavor in there somehow. Yeah. So, <laughs> 
if it was up to you guys, it'd be just country all day. Who, who's your favorite country sure. artist? Sure. Morgan Wallen. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Mullet, mullet town, baby. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's what's up. That's what's up. Um, how do you get along with the Spanish guys? So I know we talked a little bit about this, um, but like what Spanish guy do you, I get, guess, try to talk to the most? Uh, I sit next to Osvaldo in the locker room and he, mm. um, he came in as a new guy at the same time as me. So we have a good relationship. Uh, um, and honestly, I have a good relationship with all the guys. They're all yeah. super nice. Just Osvaldo can um, speak English pretty well. Yeah. So that helps. Secretly speaks perfect English, right? Yeah, he, he does, does it like really good English. Yeah. He, he doesn't really show it on his social media, but definitely does speak very good English. I'm on the mm -hmm. press conferences sometimes and, when he busted out that English, I was like, what? You know, like, yeah, it's impressive. Definitely. Yeah. Like, uh, definitely could do something in America after his playing career. So definitely has great enough English for that. Mm -hmm. All right. So talking a little bit about your playing time, what was going through your mind when you started versus Houston? Um, nothing. I was just ready to get out there and play. Yeah. Um, I've been waiting for a while. And uh, so I was just pumped to start to, to get to play. Yeah, and what, like, did Matias come to you before the game, or when did you know that you were starting? The day before in practice, <sighs> um, he kind of, like, said the lineup as we were just working on set pieces. Um, and so that's when I knew. And, and at that point, you were just like, damn, dude, I'm going to get my first start. This is going to be awesome. Yeah, I was pumped, but yeah. I was just ready to go. You know, I was trying to, to prepare to win the game. Did you just have like a little extra juice on the practice ground when that happened? Yeah, or a little bit. A big smile on your yeah. face while like, doing the set pieces. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. That must have been a great feeling. Did you text your parents afterwards? Like, hey, like watch this game. You don't miss that. I did. I texted them. And I was like, hey, yeah, watch the game tomorrow. I'm starting. And they were excited. So That's awesome. It was, it was good. Do you have any brothers and sisters? Sorry, I forgot to ask you. I do. I have a younger brother and an older sister. Awesome. Awesome. So, yeah, that you probably texted them too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They were like, oh. Jack started. Yeah. Let's go. You know. Yeah. But then they had a problem because they're probably out of out of the area, right? And it's hard to get exactly. access. Yeah. Right? Accessing some of our games sometimes is pretty tough. Yeah. To be honest, trust me. Since I'm on the the media side and I'm on the fan side, I understand. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. I, I bet they had to download ESPN Plus or something, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and pay and pay right and pay five <laughs> bucks a month, right? So yeah. Uh, sometimes I feel like. Unfortunately, Telemundo could be the best option, but or like Uni, Uni, uh, the Latin channels, especially because we have Matias Almeida, but they make it really hard to watch yeah, a game, it, especially for your parents. Like my parents have a hard time watching the game. Like for us, we can just pop on a stream or if we're feeling like a pirate or if, if we want to go ahead and uh, pay for it, we, it's easier for us. But for our parents, at least my parents, it's a little harder when it's not on the regular two, five, you know, 48 channels. I agree. Yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah. All right. And what are some goals you want to achieve when this is all said and done? Um, just become like the, the best player that I can be and whatever that is, I don't know yet. Mm -hmm. um, to play for the national team. Yeah, that, that's to, an awesome feeling. Yeah. And to uh, win an MLS Cup for sure. Yeah. And kind of would you say winning the MLS cup above the national team or playing for the national team above winning the MLS cup? Um, I don't know. <laughs> Both. Yeah. Same. Yeah. No worries. Uh, both would be great. Sounds good. A couple of more questions, Jack. Thank you so much for your time. Um, what goals do you have set for this season? I know you got your first start, so that's a big one. What else do you have? Um, score. Yeah. Score goal. Um, and start more. Yeah, definitely. Those, yeah, are those two. I mean, it's tough to set any number of goals or any yeah. number of starts. Um, but just to keep going. Well, especially in the system where Almeida seems like he likes rotating guys, it seems like a great opportunity to achieve a lot of those goals because I, there's a lot of coaches out there where they just find an 11 and they keep their 15 or 11 every single time. But at least there's a big rotation in this, in this squad. Yeah. Yeah. He supports young players for sure. Yeah. And that's, and it's great to see, right. Mm -hmm. um, having played on the wing as, and as a 10 and at central midfield, 
where do you see yourself in the system? Is versatility something everybody works on or is it something that you do personally? Um, in the system, I probably see myself in the middle. Uh. as like a, a box to box guy. Um, it, but versatility, it's not really something that you, I myself have like mindfully focused on or tried Got to it. do. It's just through school and growing up, I played a lot of positions. Makes sense. Um, so it's just something that I've become, uh, it's become pretty normal to me to be able to play multiple positions. Mm. And that, and that's pretty normal for a lot of American guys, right? Cause mm-hmm. a lot of the American Definitely. guys have to play different positions and, and different systems going up. Right. There's not Definitely. one system where they just kind of the pipeline. Yeah. You get one American coach is like, no, I think you're a defender, you know, or one that says, no, I think you're a striker. Yeah. So it can change at any time. Right. Exactly. It happens yeah. all the time. Um, how do you feel playing mid in the rigorous system of Matias Almeida? Is it different? I enjoy it. Yeah. Yeah. Is I, it, uh, I think it's tough, but I enjoy it. When you're explaining the system to your family, do you kind of use like basketball kind of ISO systems or like, how do you, how did you tell your parents? Like, this is how we play. And a little bit, the, the best way I could describe it to them is, um, like defensively it's almost like man yeah it's like man-to-man basketball yeah right for different stretches of the game and so it's um that's one of the reasons i enjoy it is because i think it's fun mm. to go out there and try to beat the person you're up against right um, it's a good challenge in, in basketball it's fun too until you get like the switch off of lebron james and then you you're, yeah. you're, you're, you're one-on-one with <laughs> lebron james you're like oh yeah. no and then, like, you have no chance. So right, right. That, that is a difficult piece of, of the system. Is there something that you guys kind of talk about where um, maybe you don't want to go up against Jordan Morris if you're not the fastest guy on the team or you don't want to go up against Paul Ariola if you're one of the fastest guys or the slowest guys on the team? Is there something where you, you in the game you're like, hey, let's switch, dude, let's switch right now. What's going on? Yeah, I'd say communication is a, a huge piece of um, – making the system work so like mm. switching is normal switches make sense when switches make sense um mm. and so i think it's one of the most important pieces to the entire system is being able to speak D- did any player on the houston team or any of the games that you played against kind of shock you the, the person that you had to cover diego chara my yeah. first time playing against portland last season um yeah i mean the guy's a beast and you just like well, the way he kind of his first touches or the way he kind of goes up against you or uh, his, you his defensive um, play was really, really impressive. I tried yeah. to dribble by him once. I think the first time I got the ball, I just tried to go by him and he just stripped me like so easy, so easy. He just took it right off me. And I was like, wow, that, that's impressive. <laughs> was that your welcome to the MLS, Brooke? Yeah, I think it feel? was. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Hey, that's a great person to kind of get yeah. get into the MLS. Uh, you know, he's a Portland legend. Uh, last night, you know, not one of his brightest days. You know, but you know. oh yeah, what what kind of happened at the end of that? Were you were you in the middle of it? No, I just I ran over there to try to help separate guys. They were just arguing, and it just it kind of got a little bit out of control mm. um, in terms of guys just wouldn't stop on both yeah. sides. Um, but I think it looked worse than it probably was. Mm. I think the ref kind of freaked out a little bit and didn't really know how to handle the situation. And that made it a bit worse too. Yeah. It really wasn't that bad. Yeah. And, and a lot of us or a lot of the Quakes guys being on yellow kind of accumulations. It's like, no, oh, man, get out of that. Blown out yellows. I was like, it's not that big. This isn't that big of a deal. I don't know right. Why right. Like Nathan has aggressive tackles all game, but doesn't get a yellow and then gets a yellow there. And it's like, Oh yeah. no, what are you doing? Right. Man? We need every single person in this kind of yeah. system. All right. Now this is kind of the, a couple more, I think three more questions left. Jack, thank you again for your time. Um, this is kind of like the fun questions. Have you ever tried the orange sauce from Levix yet? I asked Andy no. Rios the same thing. So no, I haven't. No? Maybe I should. Yeah, I guess you know, I gotta call the Quakes because Andy Rios hasn't tried it either, but it's like this is like a staple, right? You know, like really you know, like a San Jose State University staple. Mm-hmm. Like if you're going drinking and you're going to someplace in like San Jose Bar and Grill or something, and you're hungry at 3 a.m. This is where you go, right? This is where oh, everybody is. Yeah. Um, yeah, I gotta, I gotta, you know, I gotta get it on the phone and be like, hey, uh, 
whoever runs or margarita i think runs the the food be like hey you get some little vic sauce in there you can buy it like six dollars a bottle yeah it's it's awesome it's like it's burritos with this orange kind of garlic sauce and it's delicious it's delicious oh i need to try that Sounds yeah good. is it are, are you a fan of burritos now since you come out to california or is it something brand new to you no i love them before and oh. so yeah i less the it, it only gets better here. Right. Yeah. I miss that. In Japan, we don't, we don't have radio. So it's like, yeah. So it's something we definitely miss. Um, how is the culture? We'll end with this one. How is the culture in San Jose different than you've experienced before on and off the field? Um, the culture in San Jose is different than Tennessee. Yeah, for sure. Because I, I don't know. I, it's hard for me to explain, but it's just the atmosphere in California is different and San Jose is even a little bit more extreme mm. in terms of um, like the lifestyles that people live. And um, yeah, I, I don't think I have a very good answer to be honest. I still, I can't figure it out yet what yeah. it is, but there's just something about it that um, because San Jose finds a way to be Memphis is a, is a blue collar town and mm. San Jose finds a way to be blue collar, but in California. Yeah. In right, a really right. good, nice, expensive area of California. So it's a cool mix and I like it. <laughs> yeah, it definitely. It's blue collar, but then we have Valley fair, right? So it's like, exactly. Yeah. So it just doesn't even make any sense, but it works. Yeah. <laughs> you get like, uh, yeah, you get like blue collar people. Then you get trophies at, at the Gucci store, you know? So it's like, uh -huh. whoa, it's a dude, completely different, you know, two types uh -huh. of people. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, but yeah, um, is there a lot of Latinos in Memphis or in Tennessee? Um, maybe more than you expect, but nothing like in California for sure. Got it. Got it, so, yeah. um, yeah, that's different. Yeah, for sure. And the, the, the food here, the Mexican food is the best Mexican food I've ever had. Yeah, no doubt. No, definitely. Um, exp I had to usually explain that to people in Japan where, yeah, you know, California was part of Mexico for a long time. So that's why wow. there's a lot of Latinos and a lot of heritage in California and Arizona mm -hmm. and uh, all those countries or all those states. So, yeah, it's something that they don't know. But um, Jack, thank you so much um, for kind of taking the time out of your day. I know I had a problem waking up on the last one and I apologize about that. But thank you so much again for taking the time to spend with Tectonic Takes and all the fans. No problem. Thank you for having me. Yeah. And um, all I have to say, man, is best of luck with the rest of your season. And you'll definitely have been having a lot of us in your corner. So we'll be rooting you on. Thank you so much. Sounds good, man. Appreciate it. All right, Jack. Thank you so all much. Right. Take care. Bye. <laughs> Thank you.